All right, guys, let's see how we can install MicroStack under WSL2. We have a lot of uh, preparation to do first. All right, we'll start with uh, the loaded modules inside of ETC modules load and modules conf. You need to pass DM multipath in order to be loaded on boot. Then we'll see the configuration in ETC system D multipath tool service. You need to rewrite the condition virtualization to yes here. And the next step is to be able to provide custom kernel to WSL. Just because uh, the Microsoft provided kernel doesn't have a native support of uh, OpenV switch. So here are the steps. First, we will install the essential libraries to be able to precompile our kernel. And uh, let's uh, choose the user source directory where we will clone from the latest branch the Linux kernel. When we enter inside of the directory, we'll be grabbing the latest uh, release with git checkout. So we'll be using our currently installed configuration to overwrite and create the default configuration for the newest kernel. Next, we'll start the menu config in order to enable OpenV switch. So let's see this configuration right now. Okay, let's become root and let's check out the release. Here, we'll copy and overwrite our config file and we'll type uh, make uh, menu config. Here we would like under networking support and networking options to enable OpenV switch. As you can see everything here is with M and we are selecting those and then from the previous uh, menu from the general setup we would like uh, to check those two marks then we exit and uh, save the configuration afterwards we need to compile the kernel we're just utilizing with those two lines all our processor cores and we're using the make uh, command and before the actual compilation we need to install the dwarfs uh, we can just uh, run those two commands and it will take a lot of time, so I'll just stop it for now. And the next step is just to install the modules for the kernel. So they are external and you can make them with the modules installed. So as you can see, we are installing OpenV switch additionally to the kernel. And if you have completed everything correctly, you will be able to see VM Linux. This is our newly produced Linux kernel image that you need now to use inside of WSL. There are two steps that can be performed. The first is to copy the file inside of a preferred directory. So this is my user and then is the WSL2 directory. And let's go to this directory actually. As you can see we have the file here and also we have in the previous directory .wsl config. And if we open up uh, this file, we will see that we are configuring uh, WSL to use our custom kernel. Uh, so this is the path to our VM Linux file. And as you can see, we have escape a character before the slash here. Once this is ready, uh, we should be able to shut down the Linux machine, so we'll open up one uh, terminal and we can type WSL minus minus shutdown. We'll be able afterwards to check our kernel. So if I type your name minus R, we'll be able to see that we have WSL2 and OpenV switch added, and there is also a plus sign, which means that this is our custom kernel. Now, when everything is ready, we should be able to launch the following command sudo snap install micro stack and we're using dev mode and edge uh, just because uh, we don't want to restrict the installation and dev mode will allow us to do so. So it will take some time, you need to be patient and if your system has a lot of uh, cores and memory, everything will be ready in a matter of uh, seconds. 
Ok, now it's installed. If we type uh, snap list, we'll be able to see that microstack is installed and we can start issuing commands. The point is that uh, we should be able now to initialize microstack with this command microstack init. We will use the control plane and will be automatically answering to all the configuration options. And this will also take some time as all the internal services need to be configured. As you can see, RabbitMQ, MySQL, and the Horizon dashboard, some TLS certificates, also Keystone, and all the important services of OpenStack are right now being bootstrapped. In a matter of uh, minutes, MicroStack is initialized. And we can issue the following command to be able to see what kind of services it provides for us. And we see here Glance, uh, Cinder, Nova, Placement, Neutron, Keystone. And they can be all accessed on uh, this IP address. So we'll be able to use this address here in browser to open up the uh, dashboard. And I'll just paste it and I'll allow the security certificate we have to log in so we are using admin here and for the password we'll grab it uh, from keystone so in the terminal i'll get the credentials so that's the password for the current distribution i'll use it in the browser let's click on sign in and this should be transferring us to our dashboard if we click on instances, we see that we don't have and we can create one. This can be done again from the terminal. We will give it a name of test and we will use the lightweight image of uh, zeros. And if we go to the dashboard and refresh, we should be able to see that uh, the instance is being uh, created. Uh, we have uh, some IP addresses with which we can access the instance and we can work with it. Alright, so you saw how uh, we can install MicroStack. Alright, so from here on you can explore the interface, create uh, new instances, of course attach volumes, uh, create uh, networks, routers, uh, floating IPs. Yeah, basically have on your computer a working OpenStack um, distribution. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to the channel.